No worries, I'm Steve, I'm front of house, and this is Ben. Hi. Uh, look after monitors for Alphabet, and I've been doing it for the last maybe three years or so. Yeah. Monitor Engineer of the Year. Yes, TPI Monitor Engineer of the Year, 2009, <laughs> no less. Um, and here we are with the iLive. As you can see, and our loads of computers. <laughs> Indeed, the world of laptops on this tour. Uh, last year we took out um, uh, two iLive systems. We had the 112s, uh, front of house and monitors. This time it's T-Series, and this time we've only gone with one desk and one rack, so we're just totally cutting down the amount of gear. Uh, Ben's operating the desk for monitors, and uh, this time I've got no desk at front of house. I've just uh, gone all Wi-Fi, so I've just got a, uh, a router connected to the system. Take a laptop over to front of house, or to wherever I want to be when I'm mixing, and operate the system just on a laptop. And I have the uh, the desk because um, I'm quite hands-on with the mi mixing. Um, I've got kind of seven stereo mixes of ears and a load of wedges on stage. Um, I do use the, the laptop as well though for wandering around stage and EQing people's wedges and listening, like changing things in soundcheck. So to EQ wedges, I simply just uh, drag on the thing on the EQ here, and you can hear, hey 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 hey. Hey, hey, get rid of the nastiness. And then uh, go to the low end. Hey, two, two, two. There you go, and that's, uh, that's my wedgie cue done. Simple as that. That one gets moved. Just drag and uh, hear the sound. Hey, 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 hey. Find the frequency and just drop it out there. Cool. Cool. Simple as that. And then when it comes to the show, I just go back to the board and operate as you would normally. Uh, and they both talk to each other seamlessly and if you change something on one it happens instantly on the desk and in front of the house. Yeah. So it's, we're, um, we're actually using one brain on this tour um, and we've split the channels. We have about 32 inputs so we split those some channels well most, most of the channels twice but some of them three times. I have extra channels for wedges compared to in ears and um, on this desk we only see the monitor channels so the, all the front of house channels that we've split are separate. Uh, that way that there's no way I can go to the wrong channel and mess up the front of house mix for Steve. Uh, likewise, in his editor, he can only really see the channels he needs uh, to mix on. Yeah, I mean, you can choose uh, if I want to see what he's doing and if he wants to see what I'm doing, that's, that's quite simple to do. Uh, but it's easy if we just keep it separate. There's less crosstalk going on, so that means there's less updating of information on my computer and less updating of information on his surface. If I change something, he doesn't need to see it. And the same, I don't need to see what he's changing. Um, like I say, we're only using one brain. That means there's only one gain. But however, there's two trims. So I can trim if I feel someone's vocal is a bit quiet today, they've got a sore throat, I can just alter the trim to bring that up. That's no problem at all. It doesn't affect his end of things because yeah. he also has a separate trim. So once we've kind of agreed on a gain and it's in the right ballpark, it can stay there and we can just trim it. And we can compare at the end of a few shows and say, oh, we've both turned that up by 3 dB, then we can just bring the gain up by 3 dB and set our trims back to zero. Cool. Um, ben, can you maybe tell us a bit about your background and stuff, and your kind of like history through? Yeah, I, I uh, started at AdLib um, after leaving college at 18. Um, made cups of tea for many years and <laughs> kind of developed through the company um, kind of first doing system tech in for talk like bands like Texas and Delamitri um, then kind of started doing more bands myself uh, and then one day in, I got the job doing Atomic Kitten um, and that took me kind of to the, the next level downhill from there yeah it? downhill and uh, <laughs> Yeah, kind of all sorts of weird bands pop up. Um, kind of did Scissor Sisters for a long time. Um, who else was on Machine Head? Sort of, you know, kind of a wide range of bands. Um, and just kept going, really, and not stopped. I know you won the Monitor of the Engineer, you know, Monitor Engineer of the Year award. Yeah. Do you, is monitoring your thing? Is that the, is that um, the area you like most? Um, it's kind of, I, I, I like doing front of house. Uh, it's just I kind of seem to do more bands, monitors I guess. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely more fun at this end of the multi-core as well. <laughs> Have a laugh with all your all your band mates and uh, yeah, it's, it's all good fun. Okay, and uh, Steve, what's your, what's your kind of story? Yeah, I've also uh, been with Ali for quite a while, probably around about 12 years now. 
again obviously um, the coffee and tea that I made was rubbish so I got to go out and mix <laughs> stuff so um, yeah been for a long time again lots of similar references similar acts and stuff we both work with in system tech for many years so we're also familiar with the whole setup of the system it's not just uh, from a kind of studio engineers pr perspective it's not just pushing the faders up and down we see the whole picture and we realize well, how it goes together so we know how to implement what gear we have to its fullest so uh, we can get the most out of the equipment it's not just a matter of oh his vocal doesn't sound quite right today well we might consider what's going on with the speakers or what's going on with what cabling or what microphone is he using you go through the whole rigmarole which is really good because some engineers do just come at it from a point of view of they can just operate the tone control and push the fader up and down. They might not realise that when you wander in that part of the room, it sounds like there's more 200 hertz. They don't see that. They just go, it doesn't sound right today. And obviously, both both me and Ben have babysat people like this, so we know <coughs> we know that live is often damage limitation. So you need to be quick and be able to listen and work out and go through everything methodically so you can uh, uh, get the best result at the end of the day. I mean, the freedom of working with your laptop, has that changed the way you kind of view engineering big time? Uh, well, it's really good because I can be where the audience are. I'm not stuck in a front of house position where it doesn't sound the same. And many, many times um, you're uh, elevated above the audience or you're in a box or it's a bass trap or it's always different. Uh, and fair enough, you can get out and walk around and go back and twiddle it and then get out and walk around. But if your gig is very full, that's a real pain in the ass. You might be lucky, you might have a good system tech who will go out and say it's a bit like this over there and you can tweak it and rely on those guys but if I've got a laptop or a tablet I can just be there and stand and go okay it sounds different it sounds like this over here and and sort it out on the spot what about some of the twiddly stuff you know like uh, bits of aux sends and uh, you know uh, reverb sends and it's echo. no slower than operating any other digital desk on a laptop because wow. on any other digital desk you're gonna go uh, select ding hit the right page go to where you want and then turn a knob only in an analog world are you ever just going to go okay that that's aux 4 on the, on the tom you, on every digital desk you have to select bosh there you go there it is you've always got multiple pushes to get to what you're doing now and fair enough you've, you've it's convenience because you've got all your own everything is self-contained you don't need racks of, of toys anymore because uh, the digital world is really good now, you can pretty much get any sound you want. You can get stuff modelled, um, or you can, you know, it is really good. You don't need a rack of doom next to you with all this analog valve nonsense anymore. Because in reality, the person in the audience is not going to know what valve comp the uh, backing vocal is going through. Right. He's just going to go, sounds a bit quiet or a bit dull. Right. He's not going to know any of that at all. So you've got to work with the audience. You've got to listen to it from their perspective. It's good that you've got a good set of ears and you can pick all the little nuances up, but in general, the geezer who's drinking a pint of beer and listening to them just wants to hear the vocals and hear the tune and know what's going on. And if you keep him happy, that's, that's half your job done straight away. And if you can be there with him and go, oh, I know what he's hearing now. You know, you don't want someone coming over and saying, oh, it sounds rubbish. Like, well, explain. But if you can be there with a laptop or a desk or, you know, with your... Um, tablet you can just bish bash bosh there it is done 